What's going on guys, Victor here. And today we are continuing the trash fish taste test series. Now, I hope you guys know that whenever I call a fish a trash fish, I'm not doing it because I honestly think it's a trash fish. It's just my whole mission and goal with these videos is to turn heads and to change people's minds who think trash fish are trash fish into realizing that all fish have a place on the dinner table. So today we're after one of the most, I guess you would say, like the poster child for trash fish, the Bermuda chub. So we've eaten shark on this channel, we've eaten ballyhoo, we've eaten bait, we've eaten uh, toro snappers, so many things that people have put their nose up to and I'm set out, I'm on a mission to change everyone's minds and for people to realize that all fish have a role on a dinner table. So what we're gonna do today is, uh, Brooke and I are out here, we're just anchored up on a little reef and whenever we go diving, we always see so many chubs, which you guys are about to see. And chubs are extremely plentiful. I don't ever really see anyone taking them home. So chubs have very small mouths. Uh, they're not very picky in terms of what they will eat. And I think that's why they get such a bad rap too, because they're known to eat poop. They're known to follow cruise ships around and eat the, the waste. Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons people kind of consider them a trash fish. Now, fish with really small mouths, you gotta fish a very small bait, as well as a very small hook. I believe this is a size four mustad. I'll have it linked below if you guys ever wanna do this yourself. So we're gonna come over here. This is just a standard chum block. We got it over the side of the boat. We were pretty confident that the chubs were gonna be here. They're almost always here on the reef. And just to get them comfortable, you put the chum there and then you just drift back you drift back a little piece of bait and try to fool one. Oh, spot. that's a spot. All right, well, this is the first species, not a chub, but a spot. Are we gonna do a, a, a spot versus and chub catch and cook today? Spot versus chub. Let's do it. You guys see how easy that was? We have been here, we've been here three minutes already put a fish in the boat. Woo! Almost put him back into the water. Okay, round two. We got actually a ton of species here. And you know, you can come out to basically any of these little reefs down here in South Florida, get yourself on an anchor ball, take your kids or someone who's just learning how to fish. And- um, You got a spot. Oh my gosh. You, you, it's literally instant action. You know, it might not be what you want, but if you just want to come out here with the kids, and get tight and just have some fun and just teach them about different fish species. It's very easy to do. Oh, that was a spot. Man, I cannot get away from the spots. That's a bigger one. Yeah. Look at him. These guys have some pretty gnarly teeth. Let me show you here in a second. Look at these teeth. Look at those teeth. Isn't that funny? Tell me your little kid wouldn't love catching one of these. Got a blue runner. If you ever need blue runners for bait, come out here to any of the patch reefs and uh, put a chum bag out and usually have a ton of blue runners behind the boat. Perfect little bait too. Another species. Can even catch Ballyhoo doing this. We've caught every species except our target. The yeah, tail ate me. Here's another species. The very famous yellowtail snapper. So many people come to Florida to catch these. We actually just caught a bunch of them in the Keys. By far one of the prettiest fish we have on the reef. You know, when you go out and you try to do one of these videos, never works out in your favor. It's usually when you're trying to catch something else that you end up catching the trash fish. And then when you actually go and try to catch the trash fish, you end up catching another trash fish and not the target species. They said it couldn't be done. They said you couldn't do the chub. There are so many chubs down there. And I said, Vic, I'm not gonna pick up the camera this time. Then maybe you'll catch one. And of course I wasn't holding the camera. And we got one. And you got one. I've, I've just never been so excited to catch a chub in my life. Remember I told you guys why people don't like them? That, right there. They're always full of poop. I don't, they must, they don't eat for three weeks at a time. They're full of poop, 
always full of poop and it smells so bad and I think that's why people don't like it. Is that a mutton? You gotta be kidding me. There's a mutton snapper eating out of the chum bag. He's not legal, but that's so crazy. Right there, that's a mutton. That works. <laughs> they they certainly look cool. Look at all that mess. Yeah, well, there he goes. That is why. Oh gosh. That is why people do not keep chubs. Is because they just defecate like crazy. It only took us three buoys, one chum bag, and about an hour to put two chubs in the boat. Never thought I'd say it. I almost lost them. But I'm very. Uh, I'm very excited to do this catch and cook for you guys. We also got some spots in the cooler. Brooke and I are about to bounce. There's a huge storm coming behind us, so we'll see you guys at the fillet table. So first we're gonna fillet the spot. And just so you guys know, both spots and Bermuda chubs, which are the fish that we took home, uh, you can keep two fish per person or 100 pounds, whichever is greater. That's what our state deems as unregulated. So I'm gonna take my time because this guy is so small and I think one of the reasons people don't want to take fish like spots and chubs home is because they're just they don't have a lot of meat you know they're kind of a pain in the butt to fillet you gotta fillet a ton of them if you want to have a dinner but I've already filleted one and I'll tell you what it looks good it looks really good So look at that. You would never know that that is a spot. And this one I just filleted right before it. This one's even slightly whiter than the other one. Kind of reminds me of a crappie fillet. And this is a little six inch Dexter Fisherman's Flex. Perfect knife because it has the uh, dexterity and the maneuverability for a small fish like this. See? You should always try to leave your rib cages intact on your snapper and grouper. Here is the real star of the show. I thought we were not gonna get one. It took just so long. So Bermuda Chub kind of has the uh, anatomy of a, of a snapper, you know? That right there, that's already the poop flying up, but I brought a secret weapon to rinse our fillets off. So we outline just like with anything. All the way to the tail. Get your knife on that spine. Go up. Above the rib cage. It looks like it has mushier meat compared to the. Um, um, it's pretty firm, actually. Hey, you know what's funny? If you guys have ever seen the video that I posted of a black belly rosefish, their deep water snapper, look at that. Chubs also have black bellies. I don't know if that has anything to do with their biology. The that's kind of neat. The spot had it too. Look, the spot had it too. Oh yeah, it did. Very interesting. So now we do the other side. through those pin bones. And these fish, for as small as they are, have a pretty gnarly rib cage. Once again, on the other side, see, you always wanna leave the rib cage on, because otherwise you're gonna to have to take it out of your fillet. This side accidentally pierced through it. If you guys ever wondered what the inside of a Bermuda chub looks like, there it is, right there. Looks like he's got a ginormous stomach. Huge. I'm not kidding. I'm every time we've ever caught these, they're always full. No matter what time of day, if there's no chum, chum, they're always pooping. I beats me. Sometimes you uh, accidentally rinse your chub into the salt water. Right, it's full of grass. 
Just in case it wasn't trashy enough, you just had to throw it all over the sandy bottom. <laughs> Saltwater fish fillets should never touch fresh water until the very last second you go to cook them. And even then, it just does something funky to the texture and uh, the fillet that it's not good. So since I knew chubs are such poopy fish, I was bound to get some of their guts on the fillet itself. Here's a little pro tip. Take a bucket of salt water home with you from the ocean, whether you're at the pier or whatever, wherever you're gonna clean your fish, and then rinse them off. And it's gonna make your fillets so much better. I think we have some friends coming over. They're gonna be the real judges. I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. So to spice up our little trash fish taste test, what I'm gonna do is, this is a yellowtail snapper. It is a very common fish, a lot of people's favorite fish. So if there's anything to compare it to, it's gonna be great to compare it to yellowtail snappers. It's a very mild fish. And we're gonna do a very basic seasoning on these guys. Just some all-purpose flour to give it some exterior and some crunch. You gotta go with a little garlic powder. And we have spot, Bermuda chub, and then the yellowtail snapper. And everyone's gonna get a little bit of each. Salt. Black pepper. I tell you right now, I think yellowtail is gonna be everyone's least favorite. A little olive oil. And just one tablespoon of butter. We're just gonna pan fry these flour side down. Probably all the way through just on the flour side down. That way our flour has the maximum time to crisp up. You know what, let's try to keep the fish on one side. So this is chub. These little guys are spot. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Lately, Brooke and I have been using a ton of new barbecue stuff, chef's knives, fish turners, and you guys can find them at americaskitchenshop.com. So they actually carry a lot of Dexter products too, and you guys can save 10% off all the products on the website if you use my code LANDSHARK. They have everything from fish turners to barbecue utensils. So if you guys are into home cooking and are looking for a good American-made quality uh, cutlery, you guys can find it at americaskitchenshop.com. So look at this. We're gonna get four even pieces of yellowtail snapper for everyone. So, yellowtail, yellowtail. Okay, left side of the plate is gonna be your yellowtail. Bermuda chub on the right side of your plate. Spot is at the top. That's how you can remember it. Spot is at the top. So we didn't have enough fish to do like a, you know, our normal style dinner. So we're just doing a little taste test. I like to bring different people on so you guys know we're not BSing you and just saying all oh, these fish taste good. These are not paid actors, these are our friends. <laughs> So they will 100% call us out on our BS. Do you want to go first? <laughs> Do you want to go first? No, I want them to go first. I don't want to. You don't want to sway our opinion. All right. So I'm going to start with the chub because I'm a huge yellowtail fan, so I want to see if there really is a difference. Try it. Try it? Should I go? It's good. Hold on. My turn? Let's see. Okay, here we go with the chub. Everyone's trying chub. Mm. It's good. Tastes That's great. just straight up right. right there. If, you put, if you put that on a plate and told me it was yellowtail, I'd believe you. 100%. Okay, now I'm trying yellow to try Yellowtail too. Mm. I went back to the chub again, my bad. <laughs> the, spot, good, huh? the spot is a good, little to tougher, right? I would say the spot texture is more like it mushy. It's mushier than the chub. Really? Yeah. yeah. I would say the chub is mushier. I mean, the spot's mushier mm. than the than the chub. So far, I like the chub better than the spot. Yeah, I agree. Spot is for sure mushier. Yeah, right. But it is quite tasty. The chub blows the yellowtail out of the water. I agree. That one. <gasps> right? It's a lot better. The Way yellow better. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Let me get it's a taste. It's so tender. It's so tender. Let me get a quick taste of the yellowtail. Let's see what this yellowtail is all about. Hmm. In Espanol, you say que malo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it's not que, it's not que malo. It's que bueno. That's really good. But the uh, wait, the spot or the chub? Chub. Chub. Chub is better. 
The chub is just like so Starts tender. Up. It's so good. I would say the chub's first, spot second, yellowtail third. Yeah. Right? I'm saying the yellowtail is definitely third. It's it's great. It's excellent. But I'm saying that the chub, yeah, chub. Mm -hmm. Better, for sure. This is what this channel's all about, and this is what these videos are all about, is breaking the bias, the breaking the stigmas that are out there. It is just incredible how much time and money people spend to try to catch yellowtails. They, they're pretty, people associate things that look good with tasting good. You catch a chub, and like we said earlier, it just poops everywhere. It smells bad, it doesn't look good, it just looks like a dirty fish. But until you actually bring it in the kitchen, invite some people over, it wasn't just one person who thought it was better, all of us collectively agreed that the chub was the best. We should have done the blind taste test and maybe yeah, Chris's that would, tail option might have changed. I was, that was a biased taste test. I don't, I don't really know like what exactly it's like, mm, there's like something about it. I think not really, maybe a little bit of the consistency, it was, it was almost a little bit like chewier, you know? Which one? The yellowtail. Yeah. It was like chewier, it's just like the chub was just like, boom, the chub just was, like the cloud chub nine as soon as you got the chub. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. don't know. I don't know what it was. Were any of the fish fishy? No. no. Oily. No. no. Mm -mm. Even the, like you guys were like, oh, the chub has more of like a pronounced bloodline than the yellowtail, and it was, I mean, nothing at all like off-putting about it, nope. bloodline or not. I would I'll, never I'll be able to tell long. if you served that to me and told me that was yellowtail, I would believe you. 100%. You could serve that at a restaurant, say that's yellowtail, put a little bit of sauce over the top of that rig. All I know is, is that if we're on a deserted island, we're never going hungry. <laughs> we got chubs for days. We got chubs. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like these videos, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment below of what you guys want to see next, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.